Praise the Lord, and good morning. You join New Beginning Community Church. We thank you for joining us this morning for worship and fellowship. We come just asking you to sing along with this song. We're blessed. We do not own the right to this music.
our pastor, Pastor William Beasley Sr. We ask you to pray for him as he delivers the word of God to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for, first of all, another day that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. Shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible declared that every morning his mercies are new every morning. So we thank God for his favor thus far. We thank God for each and every one of you who get present with us on this morning. We know that there are uh, Many, many places that you, have, you could have been, but we thank God that you have elected to uh, fellowship with us this morning, mm -hmm. as, as it is our desire to uh, study the Word of God and, and be ready, be, be prepared and be ready for the Lord's return, for He is soon to come. Mm -hmm. And we definitely want to be ready when He comes. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be left behind. That's going to be a horrible place left behind. Mm -hmm. and, and so we thank God once again for each and every one of you. Uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to get into the lesson this morning. We are still dealing with our apostle, Apostle Paul, who the Lord sent uh, to the Gentiles. That was Paul's calling to go to the Gentile. And so we're still dealing with Paul this morning, our great apostle to the church. Yeah. So we're going to pray, we're going to deal with it. Uh, without it, be gracious to him, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come this morning. Thank you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. And thank you, Lord God, for a desire to assemble together. And study of your word. We pray that you can speak expressly to our hearts and minds this morning that you will continue to be the Lord of our lives to lead us and guide us with thy truth. We know that thy word is true. Oh God, we ask that you would move in this place uh, this morning according to your will. You said when two or three would gather together in your name that you would be in the midst. And so we give honor to the spirit of Christ this morning in our midst. Pray that you are God that you would bless us according to your will, according to our needs. And we'll pray you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We have a great lesson this morning. We have a great lesson this morning. I, I, I'm going to say so. All, all, all the word is good. Amen. And we have one this morning that, like I say, speaks directly to the church speaks directly to the church seeing that this is the dispensation that we're living in we're living in the church era we're living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit the church era and so we thank God uh, for the word of God Second, we are in 2 Timothy this morning the third chapter and uh we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Second Timothy, Timothy, the third chapter, verses 1 through 5. And I'll be reading the King James Version only. This morning, you can follow whatever translation that you need, that you want to read. And I'm sure we'll get there together. By the help of the, the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost, we'll get there together. Verse 1 says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covets, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, mm. traitors, mm. heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Mm. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, 
from such turn away. Our focus this morning comes from the fifth verse. Our motivation is having a form of godliness. Having a form of godliness. This is Paul writing to Timothy, mm -hmm. who is the pastor of the church of Ephesus, whom Paul is describing uh, the perils of time, dealing with the perils of time that's coming against the church in these last days. He said, "No." He said, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come." Verse one. So we understand that we are in the last days, and we understand that these are perilous times. These are troubled times. These are wicked times. These are challenging time. Mm -hmm. And he said, then he goes down from verse 2 to verse 4 and begin to describe uh, the, the, the spirit of men and women in these last troubled, challenging times. He said they're going to be lovers of themselves. They're going to be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, Unthankful, unholy, but got natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In verse 5, he says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And he says, from such, turn away, turn away. So we have to understand the wording or, or the, 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 the uh, admonishing, the warning to the body of Christ. It is to turn away, to turn away from such behavior. We're living in the last time, the last days. We're living in troubled days. Mm -hmm. Where people are troubled in spirit. They, 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 they're troubled in spirit. And uh, he's telling them, he's telling, he's, Paul is telling Timothy, uh, having a form of godliness. They have a form of godliness. They have a form of godliness, he said, but denying the power thereof. Denying the power, which is uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the power of God, which would destroy this yoke that they are captured from. Understand the Bible said it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Mm -hmm. And so they have a form of godliness, which that word form suggests to you and I they have the appearance of godliness. Mm -hmm. they, they have a front of godliness. They have uh, an adulterous figure. They have an outline. They have a resemblance. Mm -hmm. They have a type, a shape. They have a formation. They have the exterior. Or last, they have a profile. This is what form, form suggests. This is what Paul is admonishing Timothy to understand. He said they have an appearance of godliness, but they deny the power. He said from those, he said turn away from those. Turn away from them. Don't run with them. Don't hang with them. Amen. <laughs> Ain't going to get no amen. amen. But uh, this is the warning to the body of Christ. He said that in these days, they're going to be disobedient. They're going to be truth breakers. They're going to be despisers of those, of, of those that are good. He said from these spirits, he said, turn away from because they have a form of godliness. They have an appearance of godliness. In other words, they, they know all the church lingo. They know how to say the church words. They have learned when to say amen and where to say amen. They have an appearance 
of godliness, but they are unholy. They're truth breakers. He said they're proud. They're boasters. Mm. We're living in the last days. And for, for us to still operate or function in, the, in this spirit, we're denying the power of God because the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God, destroys this yoke. He, he came to set the captive free. He came to give sight to the blind. He came to, to bring the, the prisoner out of, out of prison. And so to still operate or function in, in this manner or in this spirit, an individual is denying the power thereof. They're denying. Why? Because the Bible said this is the condemnation that has entered the world. And men love darkness Ooh. rather than light because their deeds are evil. Mm -hmm. This is what the word of God tells you and I. That this is the condemnation. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. He said, I, the scripture say, I sent not my son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But because we love darkness rather than light, which which all it is testifying or witnessing to is we are in the last days. Yes. And the Lord is soon to come. And so he said, turn away from them. So we can't run. <laughs> we can't run with that. <coughs> we can't we can't run with those of that spirit because they're hear what the scripture is saying because they are denying the power of God. We can't be, the Bible lets us know that uh, darkness and light has no fellowship. Has no fellowship. Neither does the house of God with idols. There's no fellowship. They have no fellowship. And having a form of godliness is having a, an idolatrous image or figure. It's a form of godliness. It's an appearance of godliness. This is what Paul is telling Timothy. And this is what Timothy has to teach the church because of the false teachers that are in the last day. Because of the false teachers that are in today's time. They have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power. He said, from such, you got to turn away. We got people saying, well, I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. The Lord has already told you what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? That, that's, that's that form of God. That's that church lingo. <laughs> we know how to speak that church lingo. Well, I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord's word has already said, turn away from them. Mm -hmm. They're denying the power of God. But you know how we do. Well, I'm waiting to hear. I'm praying on it. I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. We disobedient. We, what, what did we learn in our last lesson? That men doesn't, that men do not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Does men live? That's mm -hmm. what we learned last. Lesson. You know, I'm waiting for the Lord. Okay, well, he, mm -hmm. wait then. He didn't spoke his word, and so when he comes back, when he returns. It's the word that's that that's gonna judge us. Yeah. Isaiah, let's get into the lesson. Let's, let's get a witness. Let's get a let's let's get a witness from the Old Testament to to uh, to let us know that the Lord that Paul just didn't make this up. Isaiah, first chapter, thirteenth verse. <coughs> Understanding having a form of godliness is our thought this morning. Isaiah, first chapter, 13 verse. Word of the Lord says, Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meaning. Talking about having a form of godliness, but denying the power.
power. Yeah. He said, from such turn away. The prophet, the prophet Isaiah prophesying the word of the Lord says, bring no more vain oblations. Oblations are sacrifices. The word of the Lord said, he said, bring, don't bring me no more than vain sacrifices. <laughs> he said, incense is an abomination to me. He said, the new moons, the Sabbath, and this is what we have to really pay close attention to. He said, the calling of assemblies. I cannot away with. He said, it is iniquity, even the solemn meetings. Yeah. The solemn meetings represent a sacred meeting. A sacred meeting. A sacred uh, a sanctified, a sacred meeting. Mm -hmm. Hear what he is saying. He is saying the calling of assemblies. Yes. You know, we have uh, in, in, in that Jewish culture, they had about three solemn meetings. They had about three times they had two assemblies. Mm -hmm. uh, Passover, mm -hmm. Pentecost, and the, and the Feast of Weeks, something like that. And uh, he says, what the Lord is saying, he's saying, the calling of the assemb these assemblies, he said, I cannot away with. He said, it is iniquity. He said, even these solemn meetings. In other words, they're calling, they're, they're calling them together in the form of an outward show. Mm -hmm. They're calling them together in the form of an outward show. He said, but their, their, their heart, their desire toward me has left them. Mm -hmm. It's just the form of God. They're denying the power there. He said, that, he said, you know, you know how we do nowadays in the church ever. Every everybody's got an assembly. You got a men's conference, you got a women's conference. <laughs> Hear what the spirit is saying in the church. You got a leadership conference. You got all these conferences. You got all these solemn meetings. You got all these assemblies. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. The Lord is saying, I am not pleased with those because it is just the form of God in me. Your hearts are not with me. We're going to get into it a little deeper a little later, but this is a witness from the Old Testament mm -hmm. to let you and I know that God was tired of this back then with Israel. Yeah, he was. That they were just assembling and they were just keeping these forms of godliness. Like I said, we have learned how to say amen. We've learned when to say amen. We've learned what to say and when to say it. That's true. Having a form of godliness. Having a, a form says an appearance of godliness. Mm. And the Lord got tired of this with Israel. An oblation is a sacrifice. He said, bring no more sac vain sacrifices. They were bringing uh, these vain sacrifices. They were killing up all these animals. Killing up all these animals. But they were not repenting. Mm. They were killing up all these animals. But they were not changing in their heart. All right. He said they were burning incense. He said, but they were going, you know, right back out to do the same thing they've been doing. No change. He said, you're calling these assemblies, you're calling these gatherings, and you're calling them strengthened and men conferences, and we're calling them all these things. And we're leaving them going right back doing the same thing. No change. Amen. We're not dedicating our life to our God. There's no change. We, he said, this is a form of godliness. He said, but you're denying the power. You're denying the fact that the Holy Ghost can change your life, can destroy this yoke that you're on, that you're bound. But you're denying it. He said, from these, he said, turn away from them. Darkness and light don't run together. Mm. 
Isaiah 29 chapter verse 13. Same prophet, same spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 29 verse 13. It says, wherefore the Lord said, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and catch <laughs> this, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Wow. Mm. Mm. We talking about having a form. God, was God didn't like that then. He don't like it now. Listen to what he's saying. He said, wherefore the Lord said, and we understand that the Bible teaches you and I, Jesus Christ was saying, yesterday, today, forever. Wherefore the Lord said, yes. for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. These people draw near me with their mouth. Right. But I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Their lips are saying they do honor. I believe that the son died. Hear what the spirit is saying. That's, that is the precept of man. Listen, listen to the scripture. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. He said, but have removed their heart far from me and the fear toward me. The fear is reverence. The fear is reverence. The reverence towards me is taught by the precept of men. The Lord don't want you, your confession with your mouth. That's a form of godliness. That is taught by the precept of man. That is not scripture. The form of godliness says an appearance of godliness, an exterior, a resemblance. It's a type. It's a front. Come on, look at what the Spirit is saying. The Lord didn't like these people worshiping him with their mouth and their lips back then, he don't like it now. No, it's doesn't. a form of God. Denying the power there, you can't deny the power because the power is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So if you deny the power, you just have a form of godliness. Right. And he, and he, and he, mm, <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah had already wow. said, he prophesied earlier, he said, this is iniquity. He said, I cannot away with. Listen, stay, stay in the lesson, stay in the word. We won't move. Their fear towards me. This is what the word of the Lord is saying. This is the Lord himself saying. He said, their fear or their reverence, their worship towards me is taught by the precept of men. What's the precept? Precepts is rules. Yeah. Precepts and rules. He said, their, their worship towards me, their reverence towards me, is taught by the rules of men. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah, you're right. uh, that's not what the Lord is looking for. No, no, All right, no. let's get to the New Testament so we can confirm that Jesus Christ was saying yesterday, today, and ever. Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe and mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have done and not to leave the others undone. Amen. Listen to what he's telling Israel in the, in the, uh, the, the Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees, because the scribes, he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. The, the scribes and Pharisees were very, very religious people. They had a form of 
godliness. And they and they practice certain things. This is what he's telling them. He said, you, 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 you hypocrites. He said, you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin. He said, you do that. He said, but look, he said, you have omitted the weightier matters of the law. The weightier matters. Judgment, which is justice. Judgment is justice. Mercy and faith. He said, these all ye have done, he said, and not to leave the others under. Here's what the Spirit is saying. <laughs> we talk about having a form of God. And religion, as these, hip, as these scribes and Pharisees, he called hypocrites, as, as they practice their uh, organized religion, he's calling them hypocrites. Because they have a form of God. They're denying the power thereof. And so, uh, you know, the power, they, they are denying the power of their own. When you understand the power of God, he said, look, you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, which is justice, mercy, and faith. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This is the power of God. Justice, mercy, faith. This is the power of God. And if you are omitting this in your walk with God, then you are though you are one of those hypocrites that worship God with your mouth and your lips. This is what he's saying in a nutshell. And he's saying, and your reverence or your fear is taught by the precept of man. Uh, ooh, I can shout. If I had an organ. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Lord is coming. Yes, sir. And he said, it's, he said that that, that broad, 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 he said, is the way of destruction. Mm -hmm. He said, and it's going to be a whole lot. He said, it's going to be many that go in there. Whole lot. He said, but narrow and straight is the gate. He said, it's going to be few that find it, go, there, go in there. Simply because, simply because we don't repent. And change. We 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 have accepted the precept of men, and we're following the broad way because everybody is doing. It. Everybody gonna make it right. The <laughs> word of God makes it right. The word of God makes it right. Everybody has. Everybody had. Everybody. All of us in our own concept. All of us in our own conceit have a form of godliness wow. in our own self. The Bible said that there was a time when men did right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. He said, but he said, but God winked at that ignorance. Mm -hmm. Now it is required for all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. Because we are not doing what's right in our own eyes anymore. Amen. Not after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not after the good news. The good news is the atoning uh, sacrificial propitiation death of uh, Jesus Christ. We can now come back to the presence of the Lord and be saved. Amen. We not, we can't, we, you, you and I are not going to be saved from the distance we have to come back. This is where repentance is. We have to return to the Lord. The precept of man tells you you can stay out there and be saved. Just believe it in your heart. Say it, say it with your mouth. That's the precept of man. The Lord says it is required of all men to re repent, return back to God. Mm -hmm. Having a form of godliness. All right, let's go to the church. 
We don't, let's go to the church. We, we, we testify wherefore the Lord said, so we testified that the Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. So now let's deal with the, uh, the gospels let us, so to speak, testify to yesterday. So let's deal with the church, which is today. Let's deal with the book of Romans, which is written to the saints in Rome. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Meat and drink was a form of godliness under the law. They had dietary laws. They had dietary laws. The Lord gave Moses, the Lord gave Moses to give the children of Israel laws. Why? To keep them separate from the other nations. You, as Christians, we don't run with everybody and anybody. Got to, oh my God. <laughs> we don't accept everything. No. Just because they have, just because it, it, it appears they have a form of godliness, that is the precept of men. That, that reverence towards God, that worship toward God is taught by the precept of men or the rules of men. We have to turn away from them because uh, our, our uh, precepts are taught by the Holy Spirit, Amen. taught by the Holy Ghost. Yes. So if, if you deny the power thereof, if you deny the Holy Ghost, then what spirit are you led by? You led by the spirit or the precepts of men? That's erroneous. That's an error. He said, turn away from me. There's one Lord. There's one faith. And there's one baptism. There is not. <laughs> no. There is not. Scripture said there's one God. Yes. One mediator between God and men. The man. Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you are denying the power of thereof, God, Jesus is the power of God unto salvation. To all those that believe, to the Jew first and to the, to the Greek. He said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, it is the power of God. Salvation. So when you did, when you and I deny the spirit of Christ, when you and I deny, we are just operating <coughs> in the form of godliness. We're operating in an, in an appearance. We know how to do church. We know when time what time to go to church. That's true. That's true. This is what he's telling. This is what he is saying, and I know we like to try to justify stuff. But God's word is true. And the Lord is looking down on his people and uh, his, you know, his word. Now, now check this out. I can see, I can see if the Lord said this stuff last week, then we can question it. <laughs> but the word of God was before the foundation of the world. Yes. And it's not changing. He spoke. He spoke this from the foundation of the world. Scripture says it's already settled in heaven. It's not changing. No, it's not. It takes faith. You got to get your faith up. You can't deny the power of God. The, the, the power of God for the body of Christ is the Holy Ghost. Yes. This is what separates you and I from those that don't have it. This is what this is what would separate the law is what separated Israel from the other nation. You can't deny the power. You can't deny what God has ordained. Uh, listen to Romans. Listen to Romans 14, 17. 
It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is not some form of God. He said, but it's righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom of God. <laughs> this is the kingdom of God. Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Peace. Yes. Do you have peace? Yeah. Are you, or are you, is every day unrest for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hear what the spirit. If I, if, if I declare to be in the body of Christ, if I declare to be in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and I don't ever have peace, and he said the kingdom of God is peace, God has a peace that surpasses all understanding. All right. What's my problem if I don't have peace? Scripture said, whose mind is saved on thee, he's able to keep you in perfect peace. Yeah. But you've got to keep your mind stayed on you. Mm -hmm. And despite what's going on, Too many times we allow the enemy. Jesus has already come and told us the enemy comes not but for to steal, yeah. to kill, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. What do you think that means? Your Cadillac? <laughs> your apartment? Mm -hmm. No. That's your peace. That's your joy. That's your spirit. Yeah. That's what he wants to destroy. If he, can bring, if he can bring you to a spirit of depression, if he can bring you to a spirit of uh, oppression, that's what he wants to do. Mm. Come on, come on. But the kingdom of God is just the opposite. It's righteousness. It's peace. It's joy. He said, this joy that I give, he said, not like the world give it, give I unto you. The Lord give us his joy. He said that your joy would be full. What happens when our joy is not full? What happens when our peace don't surpass understanding? What happens when our righteousness becomes unrighteous? Mm. What happens? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We, ha we have developed a form of godliness, right. but denying the power because the power of God is peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh my God. But we have become so in intellectual and so intelligent. We've gone to seminar, we've gone to these big universities, and they have taught you the precept of man. Hear what the scripture is saying. If, oh my God. Let's keep running. When it get good, my time is running out. First Corinthians. 719. We still dealing with the church. Still dealing with the church. And, and you and what you and I think or believe versus what the word of God says to the church. I tell you what, you and I are gonna lose that battle every time. First Corinthians 719. It says circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Circumcision is a form of God. That does not work for the church. No. That was God God first circumcised Abraham right. long before the law. So don't even don't even try to put it over the law. God circumcised Abraham long before the law. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, what was required of them at that time. All males that broke the matrix okay. had to be circumcised on the eighth day. That was what God required of them. Mm -hmm. Not so for the church. Amen. The church <laughs> The, 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 the righteousness for the church is the Holy Ghost. Amen. The righteousness for the church is believing in the good news, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And 
being baptized of his spirit. This is the righteousness of the church and to live by faith. Faith faith in what? In cars and houses? No. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the spirit of God. This is what's declared. The Bible said Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. It said Abraham being called in uncircumcision. When Abraham was called, he was, he was uncircumcised. He, he was called in uncircumcision, not circumcision. In other words, they that are whole <laughs> have no need for a position. God has never liked self-righteousness. God has never liked for you to stand up and say, well, I'm saved anyhow. You're not saved anyhow if it's not according to the word of God. He said, I come. He said, they, they that are whole have no need for a position. He said, but I have come to call those that are sick. Like we all, like we always teach. It's all about repentance. Amen. You and I are not going to stand up side by side walking into heaven as if <laughs> the Lord don't matter. Amen. We're going to repent from not only our sin, but we're going to repent from our ways. He Amen. said, my ways is not your ways. Amen. And my thoughts is not your thoughts. He said, as high as the heaven is above the earth, he said, that's how high that my thoughts, my ways are above yours. The best thing for you and I to do to be justified in God is to be found faithful. All right. And that faithfulness is in the word of God. It's in Jesus Christ. It's not in making up some theory. That's the precept of men. He said, I'm not accepting that. Listen, he says circumcision is nothing. Uncircumcision is nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you knew by reading your scripture in the early church, the Jewish converts were always messing with the Gentiles, trying to get trying to get them to be circumcised. Paul had to go all the way to the council to deal with that situation. Because they tried to compel Titus. They tried to make Titus be circumcised. Mm -hmm. And Titus is a Greek. Titus said, I am not being circumcised. That is not our law. That is Jewish law. Now, Paul had Timothy to do it because Timothy's mother was Jewish. And Timothy's dad was a Greek. But because Timothy was dealing with uh, the Jews, Paul had Timothy to do it. Timothy did it. But Titus was not compelled to do it because he was all Greek. <laughs> so Paul had to go to the council. It's in the 15th chapter of the book of Acts. Read it. Yes. And he talked to, the, to Peter, I think it was John, Peter and James. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, we can't go beyond the Holy Ghost to put more on them than, right. than, than we uh, was able to bear, nor our Father was able to bear. Right. He said, if God had brought them to repentance and filled them with the Holy Ghost, that, James said, yeah, tell them to abstain from uh, you know, from Blood and 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 the meat strangled and blood and he said from fornication, from uh, you know adultery and tell them to farewell, fare ye well. He, we have to we, in 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 our earlier in our earlier text, Paul told Timothy study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, not jumping up trying to teach and preach by the precept of man. All right. Paul told Timothy, Timothy is a, was a leader that he left at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Study. To show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Rightly divided the word of truth. All right. You have to rightly divide the word. You and I are in the dispensation of the church. Mm -hmm. We are not under the law. We died to the law in Christ. We died to the law in Christ. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the book of the book of Acts. What is the book of Acts? The book of Acts is the Acts of 
uh, the apostles. It is the acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Acts. It is the beginning of the church that you and I are in today. There was no church during the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. There was no church when Jesus walked the earth. Amen. Jewish, they had Jewish temples, Jewish synagogues, and whatever else. Jesus said, upon this rock, mm -hmm. I will build, I will build my church. Right. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is built on Christ. Right. Christ being the head of the church. And the one body, many members. Jesus being the body of Christ. This is why when the church, this is why the church must be baptized. Jesus' name. Because Jesus is the body of the church. This is why the church is a body of called out believers. Because we are, we are buried with Christ in baptism. It's all in the Bible. Stop, stop following the precept of man. That's a form of God. He said, deny. Paul is telling Timothy, look, in these last days, Perilous time is coming. He said, men going to be lovers of themselves. They're going to love pleasure more than God. They're going to be covetous. They're going to be bolsters. They're going to be all in. He said, ultimately, he said, turn away from such. All right. Moving on. Galatians, fourth chapter, verse 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. Ye observe days and months mm -hmm. and times mm -hmm. and years. Verse 11, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Mm -hmm. Understand what we're dealing with. We're dealing with having the form of God, having an appearance of God. All these holidays, mm -hmm. all these paganistic, <laughs> false holidays that we celebrate, they are taught by the precept of man. Mm -hmm. They, they have no spiritual significance to them. None. I don't care what holiday you you call out. It doesn't matter. Chris Kringle ain't got no spiritual significance. <laughs> East Bunny ain't got no spiritual significance. Mm -hmm. All these are precepts of men, of man. He said he was he, he, he telling Israel. But but he was he was talking about the Jewish observance, like the months, right. the times, the calendars, the feasts, all these things that they were observing, the, the new moons, the calendar. He said, and and the years. He said, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. In other words, he's saying you that stuff is a form of godliness. It's the paganistic form. All right. It denies the power of God. God's power is not in no Easter Bunny. No, it's not. It's not in no Santa Claus coming down your chimney. No, it's not. Why do we celebrate that stuff? That's the precept of man. Yes, it is. That is not God. But we pollute it and in, 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 in intertwine the world with Christ. Mm -hmm. You may have, but Christ have it. Oh, yes. And so when that day come, hear what, hear what the description of form means. Form says an idolatrous figure. That's a form of righteousness. Idolatrous figure. We have made up these idolatrous figures or these deities, these false deities. Mm -hmm. And we worship them, we celebrate them every year. And we even bring these traditions into the church and have people in the church celebrating Christmas and all this good stuff. Why? Because the prophet Isaiah prophesied hundreds of years ago, their fear toward me is taught by the precept of me. Mm -hmm. Our reverence for God is taught by precept of me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. we, we better wake up because mm -hmm. the Lord is coming. Yes, it is. You better wake up. You, we can't eat. We can't uh, eat from the Lord's table 
and, and Satan's kingdom. He said, we can't drink from the Lord's cup and Satan's cup. Mm -hmm. We can't do it. And you and you and I are not going to make God accept. Although God, this is all right. God ain't. Mm -hmm. God ain't going to accept what he called an abomination. God created two types. God created one human being with two types. Male and female. Mm -hmm. Read your Bible. Male and female. He didn't create no male trapped in a female body. He didn't create no female trapped in a male body. The Bible said he created male and female. All the rest, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. All the rest of that stuff is taught by the precept of man. Paul is teaching Timothy to stop falling for these false teachers. Mm -hmm. You've got to teach the children of God the truth, the word of God. Mm -hmm. There's no way in the world you stand up in the assembly of God and, and teach Jewish fables or wide fables, precepts of man. We, we, we don't teach that. We teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Titus. Amen. Titus, we got to go there because we got a little reading to okay. Titus, the first chapter, verses 10 through 16. Now, this is Paul writing this epistle to Titus, another minister of pastor that he left, I think, in Greece, or Crete, left him somewhere. Uh, listen to what he's telling him. Titus, first chapter, verse 10. We're going to read from 10 down to 16. Verse 16 is what we want. We're going to start at verse 10. He said, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Save folk. <laughs> 11. Whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Do you know what filthy lucre is? Mm -hmm. Filthy lucre is money. <laughs> Hear what the Spirit said to the church. He said, let's go back to 10. He says, he said, for there are many unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, those saved teachers and your favorite bishops and all that. He said, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Luke, filthy lucre's sake is, is, is an ill-gotten gain. It's money. They're teaching it for money. Verse 1. One of, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Mm -hmm. 13. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. I'm going to read that part again. Hear what the Spirit is saying. It says, But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. You want to know if a person is a believer or unbeliever? When ain't nothing pure, when ain't nothing right, that's an unbelief. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you know. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. 16 is what we want. They profess they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Mm -hmm. Having a form of godliness, that's what we're dealing with. The Lord is soon to come, and our form of godliness is not going to save us when he comes. And it's not going to get us caught out of here when he comes, mm -hmm. having a form of godliness. You remember the, the ones that said, uh, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Lord, Lord, didn't we raise the dead? Didn't we heal the sick? He said, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. You workers of iniquity. 
if you and I don't repent from our iniquities, we're going to hear that same speech. <laughs> I never knew you. You work as of iniquity. You have to, the problem is we get confused because uh, the, 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 the healing or the blessing or the miracle that is done in Jesus' name. And so then we take the glory to us as if we did it. No, you didn't do it. You, you, you are in error. Yeah, you are in error. The fact that that person that needed healing had faith enough to believe yeah. that Jesus could heal them. You and I just pray for them. Yes. And the Lord will heal them because of their faith. Don't try to intercept God's glory. Did we raise the sick? Did we cast out devils? No, no, I did. You did. Amen. If they had faith in my name. They had faith in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You remember when uh, Peter and John went, went into the temple in the hour of prayer, and there was a, a man there asking alms, and he was at he, They brought him to that gate, to that thing, that porch every day to ask for alms, ask for money. And Peter and John walked in in an hour of prayer. He asked him for money. And Peter said, look, look it up. Look on us. Gaze up on us. He said, silver and gold have we none. He said, but what we have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Mm -hmm. The man got up and walked. He said, such as I have, he said, such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, why? He said, why? And then as time went on later, and they questioned him, he said, why are you looking at us like it was by our power or our holiness? Yes. It wasn't. Uh, it was because absolutely. Peter said it was because he had faith in the name that we call Jesus Christ. That's how he was strengthened to raise it up. Yes. You and I are not strengthened in the precept of man. In our own faith, we are strengthened because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, I can hear it. Jesus Christ is the power of God. Yes. Jesus Christ is God's manifested eternal life. He walked this earth. He healed all manner of sickness and disease. He, rode, he raised the dead. All to show through him God's power. It is required of you and I to put our faith in him. The Bible said, for God so loved the world, yes, he Lord. gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You can't be so intelligent that you say, well, I ain't believing in the son, I'm going to the father. That's disobedient. He, Jesus died for you. <laughs> Jesus propitiated your sin. Jesus atoned for your sin. Because of the death, burial, and resurrection, we can go before the throne of grace. Yes, Lord. Prior to that, we were just like Adam and Eve, separated from the presence of God, still out of the garden. Uh, last one. Can't, my pastor used to say, can't teach the whole Bible in one day. But last one. Hebrews 9 and 10. It says, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation, the Masonic restoration. That's where we are today. That's where we are today. Listen, Scripture says, which stood in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Yes. The body of Christ, the church is the reformation. It is the body of Christ. The reformation was the reforming. It was the, the, the messianic uh, restoration. The kingdom of God, we have the word of God has told us it's not in meat and drink, but it's in righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the, the reformation. This is the reformation. 
you and I are you and I are not saved by anything that was before Jesus Christ. Amen. Matter of fact, Jesus said, All that came before me was thieves and robbers. He said, Yeah, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness. He said, But that wasn't the bread from heaven. That wasn't the true bread. He said, I am the bread. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! As it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus told Nicodemus, except the man is born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You don't want to be like them that cast out devils. They did a whole, they did a whole lot of form of godliness, but they denied the power because they themselves, he said, I never knew you. You were with love and iniquity. They themselves never got their sins remitted. But because the people that they were ministering to believed in the name of Jesus. God said that the contrite heart and broken spirit, he said, I will in no wise despise. When we come to the Lord broken, humble, mm -hmm. and a desire for him, he said, I will not despise that. Scripture says, if we fall on the rock, we will be broken. That's a good thing. That's encouraged. Fall on the rock, be broken. He said, but if the rock fall on us, he said, we're going to be crushed to power. That's a bad thing. At that point, it's too late when the rock, when the rock will fall on us. It's too late. But if we fall on the rock, we'll be broken. But if the rock fall on us, we're going to be crushed to power. We're going to be destroyed. We're going to be where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. E eternal damnation. This is why we are called to teach and preach the good news. The good news. Because you, you and I don't, don't have to. You and I can be delivered from eternal damnation. That's the good news. But you, you know, we can't keep practicing or living in a form of that and denying the power of it. We have to, <laughs> we have to live according to the kingdom of God, righteously, peacefully, joyfully, in, by the power of the Holy Ghost. But anyway, like I say, we're gonna give you up for this for this morning. Pray that the word touch your heart and mind. We're about it. Be gracious in heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come this morning thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for supper with us this morning. We pray that you would give us understanding of, of thy word. We thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice that you have made in your body to bring salvation unto us, to, to give us the spirit of reconciliation, be ye reconciled unto God. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing. We thank you for that prepared place that you went away to prepare for us, Lord. As we await your appearing, Lord, we know that you will soon to come. We pray that you will look, up, look upon us according to your will, according to our need. Take it from this place, bring us back again at the time of the assembly, and we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus.